So let's take a few minutes to review the program, although most of you are already familiar with it. Next slide, please. So this is a high level summary of the Complete Trip ITS for Us program. As you can see, there are multiple partners involved with this initiative with the goal of deploying innovative and integrated trips to support mobility for all users with a particular focus on underserved communities. So as you can see here, this involves the lead ITS joint program office from the US Department of Transportation, but also involves the Federal Highway Administration and the Federal Transit Administration. We're looking to make these large scale deployments that are replicable and address the challenges of planning and executing all segments of the complete trip. We would like to target all users across all modes, regardless of location, income, or disability. Next slide, please. So we have five program goals, and these program goals are spur high impact integrated complete trip deployments nationwide. This first goal is to assist the transportation industry in tackling the difficult challenge of providing complete trips for all travelers nationwide by streamlining and expediting solution development through pilot deployments. High impact replicable integrated solutions developed by these pilot deployments will reduce the cost of future deployments of these critical personal mobility enhancements. The second goal is to identify needs and challenges by populations. The needs and of the communities to support mobile mobility options for all travelers, regardless of location, income, or disability are important. Populations within each community have different needs and challenges for accessing transportation options to improve their quality of life. The third goal is to develop and deploy mobility solutions that meet user needs. This is will allow us to take revolutionary steps to integrate advanced technologies, especially those that enable adaptive and assistive transportation technologies into the management and operations of the transportation network, including non-motorized modes. Here we are, our goal is to engage key partners within the federal government, the research community, stakeholder organizations, and private industry to support development of potential solutions for all travelers. The fourth goal is to quantify and evaluate the impact of the integration of these advanced technologies, strategies, and applications toward the improvement of safety and mobility of all travelers. Quantified impacts support communication of technology benefits to future deployers and decision makers. And finally, the fifth goal is to determine which technologies, strategies, applications, and institutional partnerships demonstrate the most potential to address identified barriers to providing complete trips to all travelers in a variety of communities and build environments. This, we also, the goal is to disseminate the lessons learned from replicable solutions developed by the deployment sites to catalyze additional deployment. The systems engineering process that we're going to talk about is critical to all of these goals. Next slide, please. The US Department of Transportation has awarded five teams with phase one funding to support the development of their deployment concepts. These five deployment sites include the University of Washington, California Association of Coordinated Transportation, Heart of Iowa Regional Agency, ICF International in Buffalo, New York, and the Atlanta Regional Commission. Next slide, please. There are three deployment phases and one post-deployment phase. Participants are currently in the first phase, concept development, where they will develop their ideas to ensure future success. In later phases, they will test and evaluate their projects. The deployments are expected to sustain operation for at least five years after the program is completed. Next slide, please. 
Uh, I am Kate Hartman. I'm the chief for the research evaluation and program management team in the ITS joint program office at the USDOT. So next slide. So we're going to have a the, here's the agenda. Um, it's actually two tasks briefed in uh, one presentation. Uh, the task 13 with the plan and then the task 14 with the overview. Um, so we're, I'm going to go over the integrated complete trip deployment plan template, the refined phase one approach, and then the phase two and three technical approaches with schedule and cost estimates. Um, talk a little bit about the public webinar. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So I guess the easiest way to talk about the integrated complete, complete trip deployment plan and the uh, presentation is that this is really your phase two slash three technical proposal with an oral presentation. There's a third deliverable, which is a public facing webinar, and I'll talk about the difference between that public facing webinar and the oral presentation as we uh, move along. But really, um, you are to take the previous 12 plans, integrate it into a holistic view of what you're going to do for phase two to two and three, and submit that as your uh, technical proposal for phase two and three proposals. Next slide. Now I'll get into some some details here. Uh, again, um, the good news is that uh, the plan is designed to support the development of the response to the future NOFO. The information can be used directly for the uh, NOFO phase two and three saving resources. Uh, the plan that you will submit for task 13 allows the sites to get feedback from the US DOT before submitting their final NOFO response, and all the work on tasks uh, 1 through 12 uh, will be summarized and integrated into this report. So um, this will be uh, the refined deployment concept that you've been working on in phase one, and it sets forth the high level phase two design build test and phase three, the operation maintain and evaluate um, schedule. And uh, this at the at the high level non proprietary uh, level will be shared with the general public through a webinar. Next slide. So this is not an intuitive slide, so I'm going to try and walk you through it, uh, but we will be um, happy to answer questions to try and clarify. So phase one of the plan that is submitted, it's not required to be uh, 508 compliant, and you can see the four different sections. Section one, which is refined phase one deployment concept, section three, which is phase two and three deployment schedules, and then section four, phase two and three deployment cost estimates have a page limit of 40 pages. There is a total page limit of 75 pages. So if you maxed out the 40 on section one, three, and four, you would have 35 pages for section two. However, that's a ceiling, not a floor. So if you want to use fewer pages on section one, three, and four, you can um, and use more pages on, to, on section two. Just the entire uh, plan needs to be within the 75 page limit. And when you submit the final uh, technical application, it will need to be 508 compliant. Uh, next, next slide. So you can see this is a slide we've used a lot. Um, you can see the interdependencies. It's basically everything you have worked on so far folds, folds into the ICTDP. Um, and then the uh, outcome of the uh, the actual plan that you submit, uh, you will be you will be using that to do the um, the deployment briefing as task 14. And I'll get into some more details about that later. Next slide. So here are the, the three deliverables from task 13. It's a word version, so non um, 508 compliant on the uh, trip, uh, the complete trip uh, deployment plan. Uh, you will get comments back and there will be a final uh, complete trip deployment plan. Um, and from this plan, you will do a public facing webinar uh, on your concepts for phase two and three. Again, more details as we, we get into this. Um, just a note, the uh, documents here 
will, are going to be treated as actual technical proposals and will not be released to the US DOT. Next slide, please. So the uh, major components of this plan uh, is the refined phase one. So basically what you've learned from going through these last 10, 12, 14, 15 months um, will be uh, revised and you will make sure that you know, you've got the, the concept to address the challenges and the expected outcomes. And then there will be the second part, which is the phase two and three technical approach. So it will be a summary of what you plan to do uh, in the phase two and three, along with uh, we will also, you will also submit a schedule and a co cost estimate. Um, so the schedule is at a high level um, and some with some supporting information. Remember, you will send in a, a draft. USDOT will comment, and so you have time to refine it. Um, and then also a cost estimate. And it's intended to provide information and guidance um, regarding the costs allocated by projects uh, and the phase and task. Next slide, please. So, uh, in digging even deeper into some of the ICTDP sections. Next slide. So, section one, the deployment concept. Uh, we're going to be drawing on all the materials again uh, prepared in the previous tasks. And it should uh, concisely summarize the problem, uh, you know, the, the problem we're solving. Make sure that you have that uh, identified and that you are actually addressing that. The overarching deployment concept that will address these challenges your, and your expected outcomes. Also, uh, we would expect to see data to be generated by your, your system, the key measures of performance and the methods of assessing these impacts on an ongoing basis the steps that you're going to take to ensure the safety and privacy of participants, the steps you plan to take to ensure the system security, and any and all expected open source soft software and other supporting contributions expected from the system design and development process. Again, none of this should be surprising to you at this point, and you should basically have been or are working on all of this information. Next slide. Uh, so the phase one deployment concept uh, should also um, address a summary of the site stakeholders and their needs that have been identified through the systems engineering process, the deployment objectives, applications and services provided, system performance measures used to characterize the impact of the system deployment, and site boundaries in the proposed location of key deployment elements, um, uh, map, for example, uh, because I know that there are some, some sites that don't have all of the actual physical locations locked down. Uh, you're going to need that for phase two and three. Uh, next slide. And then again, the uh, section one will have the refined uh, phase one deployment concept where uh, you estimate the numbers of participants, vehicles, mobile devices, service area dimensions, roadside, wayside infrastructure elements, and other relevant countable deployment elements envisioned as a part of your at scale deployment. Uh, we're not going to hold you to exactly the number, but you should have a pretty good idea through the process that you, you have uh, been and are going through now in planning. And so this is really your chance to change the initial scale of your project to match what you found out do, during your planning and adjust the scheduled budget and staffing. This could be larger or smaller, uh, in terms of the deployments or engagements, less or more complex uh, and uh, scaled back features and or scaled back features. So again, um, but it's got to be within a tolerance range and we'll get to that a little bit later. Next, next slide, please. So we also expect to see uh, details about your team organization structure, uh, the key personnel, any changes in your organization from phase one, and summary of financial and organization models uh, uh, that you plan to uh, use uh, to sustain the, the program uh, or the project uh, for a minimum period of five years after the program is completed and there are no more federal funds. I uh, would also like you to highlight any organization risk. Um, so any critical assumptions and organizational uh, challenges, uh, and it should be one page at the most. We're not looking for you to write 
uh, thesis is on the risk, but to in general identify them. Next slide. So section two of the plan uh, should be the phase two and three technical approach. So uh, section 2.1 uh, intro, uh, section 2.2 is the phase two technical approach. Um, and each uh, task pulled from the deployment program, uh, you will have the phase two and three task descriptions. Uh, and section 2.3 will have the phase three technical approach. So again, uh, in the operation maintain and evaluate, that will be uh, where you talk to the various tasks A through F. Next slide, please. So here's an overall uh, look at what the schedule should look like. Um, you can see the pro program management runs uh, the entire uh, length of the, the phase two. Um, it actually will run the entire length of phase three as well. And then the uh, overlapping of the various different uh, tasks within um, the phase two and three. Next slide. So the 3.1 schedule summary, uh, it will include all the milestones from task 12 SEMP, uh, acceptance testing to be as observed by USDOT staff prior to approval to move to phase three. Um, basically, there will be a gate in there to make sure that things are working. Um, we also, USDOT will not consider a phase two deployment schedule in excess of 24 months. So you have up to 24 months, but you also have less than 24 months, but you still are expected to uh, deliver uh, on all the tasks. Um, also, please note, we'll provide a sample phase two deployment schedule, which a site can use if they want, but you are also welcome to develop your own. Again, uh, hard 24 month total for phase, phase two. Next slide, please. So section 3.1 in the phase three schedule summary, operate and maintain um, outreach activities. Well, it will include the um, outreach activities and on, like I said, ongoing uh, program management reporting. And we'll be tracking deployment milestones of 20%, 50%, 80%, and 100% at scale deployment targets. Uh, so that's 20% of your widgets, people, things um, deployed. And uh, so you just need to make note that you will be tracking those. Um, USDOT will not consider a phase three deployment schedule with a duration of less than 18 months. So phase two can't last more than 24. Phase three must last at least 18 months. So please work that into whatever uh, your, your plan proposes. Again, USDOT will provide a sample phase three deployment schedule, which the sites can use if they want, but you're welcome to develop your own within the constraints of the months. Next slide. So you can see in the red, uh, we're still in phase one as everyone is well aware, and that we do have this phase gate between going on to phase two and then uh, into phase three, as I, I stated. So the phase gate between one and two is is your plan and your oral um, acceptable to the USDOT as technical proposals? And then the uh, gate between phase two and phase three is that the system is safe and operates as it was designed. Okay, uh, next, next slide, please. Again, um, in phase two and three, we want we'd like to see schedule risks. Um, so this section would summarize the most critical schedule related assumptions and risks and any sort of planned uh, countermeasures. So again, maximum one page. Next slide, please. Uh, so the 4.1 is the cost summary section on the plan. And the projected cost estimates at a high level uh, should be in here and is intended to provide information and guidance for other deployers regarding costs allocated for the project by phase and task. Uh, detailed cost elements should not be included. Two tables uh, should be in this section, phase two and three uh, monthly cost report table in the template and summarized by phase cost by area of expenditure expenditure, labor, material, travel, equipment, software development, system integration, et cetera, whatever your project is using, 
um, should be uh, summarized and the cost by that area of expenditure, expenditure over the, the project. Uh, USDOT will not consider phase two and three cooperative agreements in the excess of the total federal funding estimated for these phases submitted as part of the original phase one proposal. However, a higher estimate will be considered if the recipient provides the excess to federal funding via cost share. So there may be some questions about that that um, we will uh, handle um, in the in the chat. So uh, please go on to the next slide. So here is an example of what a monthly cost report table should look like. The cost share, the federal share, the total, and the various different tasks for phase two and then for phase three. So this would be the, the estimate uh, that we would expect to see with the total that should not um, exceed the phase one unless uh, you are proposing an additional cost share. Okay, next slide, please. So this uh, task three is a deployment plan, uh, the webinar, so for, for the public. Um, so again, uh, task 13 has these two components. One is the written technical proposal, and then that will be uh, used to uh, inform the slides for a public facing webinar. Next slide, please. So after uh, you get your core site cores concurrence on your plan, um, the site will begin to develop their public webinar. Uh, again, USDOT uh, can uh, provide the template and a schedule. Uh, the webinar will describe your comprehensive deployment concept uh, for interested internal and external stakeholders, and this will be a chance to inform and engage the broader deployment community. Uh, you will again uh, coordinate with your core in scheduling, promoting, and delivering this webinar. So, same as we've been doing for the other webinars, there is no change here. Next slide, please. So uh, this is the other uh, briefing, and this is uh, what can, can be considered to be the oral presentation to USDOT. Next slide, please. Um, so there will be a uh, oral presentation we will um, expect a draft of the PowerPoint and uh, a finalized uh, version uh, in PowerPoint and PDF. And again, these will not be released to the public. They will, uh, they are for internal USDOT consideration only. Next slide, please. So the summary, the deployment readiness summary briefing process, the sites present orally their draft deployment readiness summary briefing to the USDOT. Again, this is not the same as the public facing webinar that you are required to do for task 13. Um, the USDOT will provide comments on the material soon after the briefings are completed. Sites will then update their briefings based on USDOT comments uh, into the PowerPoint and they will submit it back to the USDOT. Uh, USDOT will again comment on the updated slide deck. Uh, assuming that all comments are resolved, sites will do a final update of the slides based on these comments and deliver a 508 compliant uh, final deployment readiness summary briefing to the USDOT. Uh, we will uh, expect in PowerPoint and PDF. Next slide, please. So here are some final thoughts. Um, on here, if you would like to move ahead, please, on the slides. So here, this, there are basically some, some challenges that you may be thinking of, and these are ones that USDOT thought, you know, we'd throw out there and see um, if we could uh, provide some, some easy, easy solutions. I'm sure you've got other challenges and other issues. Um, I've been watching the questions come in. Um, so now that phase one is complete, the deployment concept has evolved and the full extent of required activity in phase two, two and three is better understood. What can be done if the full concept is now more expensive than the original BAA submittal budget? So you have two options. First, you can cap the, you, the cap on phase two and three is restricted to the federal share only. Local share may be increased to cover the additional costs. So if you can get more cost share because your uh, proposals uh, have uh, increased, um, that's perfectly acceptable. 
Uh, secondly, you can uh, adopt, adapt the scope of the effort to fit within the target budget. The scope of the phase two and three effort is detailed in the at, stage, st at scale deployment features defined by the site. So here's another issue. With all the steps and testing required in phase two, it's going to be difficult to complete the work in 24 months. Uh, so the possible strategy that uh, USDOT would suggest is identify in the ICDDP the number and type of deployment areas before committing users and locations. Look at options to scale back deployments to meet USDOT agreed upon numbers uh, and schedule. So 24 months is, is hard and fast, and there may be some uh, changes that you will need to do if you get into your phase two uh, planning and see that uh, you're running uh, up against the tough, the tough deadline. Next slide. So um, issue three that some of you may, may consider is that your approach is to use an agile development process, but the deliverable schedule follows a more traditional waterfall systems engineering process. So what <clears throat> possible strategy could you use? You could, uh, you, you could adapt your schedule to match the approach outlined in your site SEMP. All deliverables are required, but the schedule should be adapted to reflect the way the site will be conducting the work in phase two. Meaning if you are going to uh, follow an agile approach, that's fine. You still need to uh, deliver uh, all the deliverables that are required, um, but they can be done in an agile process. OK, next slide. So here are some useful references. Folks will get the slides, um, so don't bother working or writing it down or screenshotting it. Um, but basically, uh, it's information on from the CV pilots, uh, so you can just go there if you are impatient for the slides. Uh, all three of the uh, CV pilots did that. And then same thing with the readiness summaries. Um, we have also uh, published all the readiness summaries uh, for the three P CV pilot sites. So you can take a look at uh, what accepted uh, documents look like in the past. OK. As always, here are the contacts um, 